we're going to look at ester hydrolysis um, and how it's related to soap chemistry. So this molecule that you know, I have drawn right here, uh, we have these three ester groups on it. Uh, the first one I wrote out, we have the ester plus this long um, hydrocarbon chain. So this is the R group. And just to simplify it, then I abbreviated the R groups here. Uh, these don't have to be identical to this one, but nonetheless, these are very long hydrocarbon chains. So this molecule is a triglyceride. Which is also just known as a fat or an oil. Uh, really, the only difference in a fat and an oil, a fat is solid at room temperature, and oil is liquid at room temperature. So if we take this ester, or I should say triester, and subject it to base and water, this is hydrolysis conditions, or what we know, know as saponification. What we learned previously is that you know, when the base adds, it'll add to the carbonyl, and you end up breaking the ester carbon oxygen bonds. So the product of this will get this triol, which is known as glycerol. Plus, we'll also get three of uh, the saponified esters. And for now, we'll just assume all three R groups are the same, so you get three of the same molecule. But remember, we haven't added acid, so you get the carboxylates. We have the sodium carboxylate because we use sodium hydroxide. And the portions of this we have at the end here, this very hydropho hydrophobic portion. Um, it's just hydrocarbons. That's a nonpolar tail region. And then at the front of the molecule, we have this ionic portion where you have the sodium cation, the oxygen anion. This is a polar portion of the molecule that's called the polar head. And this is what's referred to as a soap molecule. So what you can think about um, you know, soap, we're trying to clean up dirt and grease and wash it away in water. So what we have are the two portions, the nonpolar portion, which is attracted to dirt and grease, the polar portion, which is attracted to water. So when soap gets in the presence of water, a micelle is formed. So what I'll do is just abbreviate these soap molecules um, just by just drawing a circle for the polar head and then the nonpolar tail. So what happens, we get this micelle, and the polar head is attracted to the water.
and then we have these nonpolar tails that aggregate in the middle. So what happens then is dirt and grease will get trapped inside of this micelle and then will get washed away um, in the water. Nowadays, uh, soap actually isn't all that common. Uh, most things that you buy that you consider a soap is really, in fact, um, a detergent because it wasn't made from a fat or oil starting material. So just to briefly look at the chemistry of detergents, uh, what we're going to start with is this benzene sulfonic acid. And this is something you should know how to make from what we talked about with uh, the aromaticity chapter. But um, you can see that you have the sulfonic acid end. And I think it would actually be helpful if I draw this out completely. So the SO3H group. Looks like this. And we do have this acidic proton here. So now if you treat this to a base like sodium hydroxide, what you're going to do is deprotonate this. And we end up with a product that very similar to soap, we have this nonpolar tail. And we have the polar head region. So this is known as a sulfonate detergent. And kind of the neat thing about this is what uh, chemists that develop these detergents can do, they can modulate this nonpolar portion. So they can you know, use different chain lengths or different types of chains. And what that will do is change the properties of the detergent. So, you know, basically how sudsy it's going to get, uh, how easily it washes away and things like that. So that's why these detergents are more common because you can easily change their chemistry by changing the groups attached.